When the power of love overcomes the love of power, the world will know peace. Jimi Hendrix One profound plus of the Udon Emanuel administration in Akwaibum State since 2015 is peace. The all-important feature has made every other aspect of development possible. As 2023 gradually rolls near, the question on the lips of most Akwaibum people remains. Will the peace be maintained during and after the electioneering? As concerned and patriotic citizens, it is pertinent to ask this sort of question. In an attempt to answer, Ibn Patriot, a pan aquibum sociopolitical organization, on Tuesday, 15th March 2022, held a press conference at Ewit Housing Estate, Uyo, the state capital, to offer advice, clarity, and direction. Even before presenting the text of the press conference proper, Elder Statesman and Chancellor of Ibom Patriots, Obong Basi Inwayan, set the tone in business-like fashion. Gentlemen, I welcome you. Uh, I'm going to speak to you about our state, Akwa Ibom State, that we so love. And... Uh, Electioneering consultation has started. There's a need for leaders in this state to advise uh, our people, the electorates, the contestants, and the rest of it on how to conduct themselves uh, during this time. Uh, because we love the peace that is going on, that we have had so far, and we want it to be continued, we want to sustain it. So, uh, Ibom Patriots decided to weigh in and uh, give uh, its advice to the people of this state, especially the youth, uh, so that our people will know how to go about this electionering period. I am a founding member of PDP. I've been around this state for a long time. I have seen all the PDP's administration in this state, starting from Abongata up to Governor Odom Emmanuel. I've been around, most of you should know that. I've also been around to see the administration of uh, May so rest in peace, uh, late Abang uh, Akwani Semen. I've also been around and see most of the, all the military administrations that govern this state. So I'm well vested with the political th uh, happenings within the state, so I know what it is. So, and then when we set up Ibom Patriots, we are said in our vision and mission statement that our interest is Akwaibo to protect and defend the interests of Akwaibo wherever it is threatened. And this is not just the state and the people of Akwaibum State. In the past, we've done a couple of things. When our son in NDDC, or our children, NDCC and Niger Delta and Ministry were threatened, we had to react as Ibom Patriots so that people would know that they are from a place and they are, our people love them, and we did that. I think those attacks had to stop almost immediately. Next up, the business of the day. And yet again, the amiable chancellor was on hand to deliver. Today, I am happy to address you on the political happenings in our state. My text. Good afternoon, 
gentlemen of the press. We invited you this afternoon to speak primarily and directly to the youth of our state and of course the men and women as well on the unfolding political climate in the state. In the past couple of weeks, we have listened to some of the utterances from those seeking positions of power, responsibility, and trust. While we commend them for the courage to offer themselves to the service of our state in different capacities, we urge them to moderate their language, tone, and modes used in seeking the support of our people. If the motive is to serve our people, then no one should intimidate anyone. Insult opponents or prevent others from the ongoing electioneering consultations. Now that our state is enjoying unparalleled peace and tranquility, all of us should ensure that this peace is sustained. The history of politically motivated violence and assassinations is a closed chapter that our state must not, cannot, and should not reopen, not now, not forever. We remember the atmosphere of fear and insecurity that enveloped our state. We remember our mothers, fathers, sons, daughters, friends who were kidnapped, maimed, or in many cases killed most gruesomely. We remember how it was difficult to move about freely in our state. With our state having become the oasis of peace and tranquility under the leadership of Governor Odomi Manuel, Ibom Petroit advises our fathers, our mothers, as well as our sons and daughters not to do anything or follow anyone that wants to return our state to those better forgotten years. Peace allows development and we can all see its fruits across all sectors of our state. Governor Odin Emanuel has given and continues to give us industries only peace shall enable the future. Akwaibom has become a construction hub. Only peace shall enable the future. Ibom Air is thriving in disguise. Only peace shall enable the future. Thousands of economically viable roads are being constructed World-class hospitals are being reconstructed or remodeled across the 10 federal constituencies. Our children are being educated in curricula that will make them entrepreneurs rather than applicants. Only peace shall enable the future. Dear gentlemen of the press, Ibn Petroit appeals for peace. Please call our people so. In fact, let us now speak directly to the youth of our state. The future of our state belongs to you, the youth. You alone can shape the future you wish to have. You don't want to cause violence or turn away investors who would guarantee employment future opportunities for you. Uh, for you. When politicians ask you 
to cause mayhem and attack your fellow citizen, you should ask him or if he too will bring his sons and daughters to do likewise. Can he ask them to do what he asks you to do? Why do you think you should be the one to be used during elections to disturb the peace while their children are in elite schools preparing for a better, for a better future for themselves? Is that what your entire life is worth? to be used only during elections and be abandoned shortly after? I urge you all, our dear youth, to think wisely. Any candidate or aspirant who markets violence as a way of gaining electoral victory will govern with violence. On the issue of 2023, Ibom Patriot, that consists of the best of the best of Akwa Ibom State, have preferences for other aspirants. But in the interest of the state, the interest of Akwa Ibom, in the interest of peace and harmony, we put aside emotions and sentiments, an individual interest to unanimously and thus Pastor Moino. This is not the time to dwell on emotions. This is not the time for sentiments. This is the time to make existential decisions. We believe, we, Ibom Patriot, we believe that we Pastor Moino, after Governor Odomi Manuel, the future is assured. Her youth and rural areas shall continue to be the focus. We believe that developmental strides already started by Governor Odomi Manuel shall continue. The peace and safety we enjoy shall not cease. This is the decision of Ibom Patriot, and we believe it is in the best interest of our people. I thank you so much for the time you have spent to listen to me or us and pray God to bless you all and bless Aquaibo State. This was succeeded by the interactive or question and answer session during which gentlemen of the press fired on all cylinders. Of course, Chancellor Inouyen was equal to the task. We've known Ibom Patriot over the years, and as you've rightly said, uh, you've stood out um, as a group that has always meant well for the interests of Aquaba Mighty in general. And when an election period, we're campaigning, we're consulting, and prepping up for next year's election. And my question is this, why now? Now I would have thought um, Ibom Patriot would have before now, long before now, come out with a statement like this to inundate us, especially the youths, because I like to think the core of the message is directed at the youths. But already, a lot of us, the youths I'm referring to, have been allowed to make long before now, make our choices, and so it's become difficult for a lot of them to change their minds now. Because I like to think that a lot of persons aspiring for one position or the other seem to have a cult-like following that they've built over the years. So as a group that has always been watching out for the interests of a Quabamite, I'd like to think that before now, even Patriot would have come out to at least clear the air on certain issues and then advise us as you have done now. So you think the message you're giving now is coming maybe a little too late. When there's a reason for you to speak, you speak. And uh, Ibn Patriot, as we said, is interested in the development or the peace and development of this state. And we cannot sit down and watch and see when something is wrong, then we keep quiet. What did they say? They say it's better late than never if you think we are late. That's if you think we are late, but I don't think so. 
because the primaries uh, for election is still some months away. So we are giving advice now to the youth to make the right decision. You should rise above emotions and sentiments in taking this decision because it is your future. I would love to know if there's anything in the guideline of your party that um, kicks against this. And if there's anything like that, have we been implementing them? Or are you going to suggest to your political party to probably stipulate some sanctions for whoever may engage this um, combative language in campaigning? Combative language or violence, no party. It may not be there in the constitution of the party or any party, but if you don't conduct yourself properly during electionary campaigning, the party will take a look at that. I believe the party has enough machineries to deal with that, and uh, PDP will certainly do that. But the first decision is you, the people. If somebody is using combative language, if somebody is encouraging combative language that will lead to violence, it is you, the people, that will reject the person. And that's what we are talking about. We observe that uh, one of the issues fueling these uh, you know, agitations in the state is this issue of microzoning of the uh, governorship position. But uh, in the course of your presentation, you did not address that. What is the position of uh, Ibom Petrot on that? I will say this for certainty. In 2006, during the administration of Abong Hatta, and there were suggestions from people to do ethnic-based microzoning. I was one of those who opposed to it. As a matter of fact, I granted an interview to this day newspaper then and stated clearly my opposition because that will hurt us as we go down the lane. Then we eventually agreed that the governorship of this state should be zoned based on the three senatorial uh, districts. We didn't think it's necessary, and I don't still think so, that we should get into micro zoning to uh, local governments, federal constituencies. So no, we said, and that is what it is. We zone to senatorial districts. Anybody within that senatorial district is qualified. But within the senatorial district themselves, they can make their own arrangements or micro zoning. That's their own if they have to agree to that. But I don't think we, as a people, should accept a situation where the governorship, the governorship should be zoned based on uh, ethnicity or uh, federal constituencies or local governments. Or if you get to what, where would you end it? So we leave it, but within the senatorial district, the leadership of such senatorial district can do anything to ensure equity and fairness. But that is morality in politics. But then you know that in reality, in politics, there is no morality or something. But people can sit on their own and agree. But that should be yours. It should not be the duty of the entire state to come and microzone governorship to any area, except senatorial. One thing that has been very common in Akwaibom State is whenever it is a time like this, people want to run for the office of the governor, and then a choice is made. Everybody will toe that line. And it is happening again. Everybody seems to be toeing the line of the governor, adopting his preferred candidate. My question to Ibom Petrot is that how well does Ibom Petrot know this man to the extent that if he becomes the governor, Akwaibom people will be better for it. There are others in, still in the race. They have supporters too. So it is not totally correct that everybody is doing the line of the governor. We in Ibom Petroids 
we've done our own assessments and we look at it we now said okay who will be the right person at this time who has a pedigree that we can rely on and the thing is in sync his program is in sync with what we have because we need a governor that is homegrown and we've seen that in Pastor Moeno. I am not the one to really talk about Pastor Moeno's programs. He should be able to tell the public that. So anybody that says, I want to govern, and then you now look up to incumbent for endorsement, then you are getting it wrong. Because you are not coming to serve the incumbent. You want to serve the people. Go out there and sell yourself and your manifesto to the people. Sir, so if I heard you well, you said uh, your founding father, one of the founding uh, fathers of uh, PDP, and uh, you just made mention of uh, in 2007, then Governor had his own as aspirant who wanted people to vote for him, and they did not tell that way. So how convinced will you now convince the youth today that the present governor has his own candidate and they want the youth and the women to vote for them. How possible would that be? I don't know what measures this organ has put in place to ensure that the peace that we're enjoying here lives after this administration. The Ibon Petra has existed for some time and I've been coming out to speak on topical issues in Akwa Ibon State. But I don't remember the last time you came out to speak. Maybe three years ago, when election was about to hold. Is it just an election unit, election affair? Today, you are sounding more like a spokes uh, team for the governor. Are you still independent, Ibon Petros? And finally, we, in this state, we've been having issues of uh, people talking about uncompleted projects. Bogus loans, right or wrong. Thank God you have people who have been in the House of Assembly. Unfortunately, Ibn Petro never said anything. Sir, what has been happening? I think I will start from the last uh, yes. question yeah. about the independency of uh, Ibn Petro. Ibn Petro consists of Akwaibomites. It's basically Akwaibom people. And uh, they have their own minds. And as a group, when we sit and we take a decision on one thing that we all agree on, and once we agree on, that will be our position. Ibn Petroid independency is not without some preferences. And we have stated it, that we will work with any government that deserves our support. It's in our vision statement. And we made it clear there that once we know that this government is worth our support, we we'll stand by the person. And in 2019, and we came out to support Governor Odum Emmanuel, and we said we are going to stand by him till the end. And that was our position, and it's still our position. So there's nothing unusual if we do agree with the governor on a particular uh, person as his successor. So that doesn't take away our independency. Our independency comes when the interest of Akwaibom people is trampled upon. Then you see our independency. You talk of bogus loans. We cannot react based on rumors. We have facts. Once we have the fact and we know that something is wrong, we we'll react. When a government is running, that government has a right to take a certain decision. But we do have House of Assembly. Ibn Petroid is not the one that will evaluate the governor's uh, request. That is the duty of uh, the State House of Assembly constitutionally. So if the State House of Assembly have found it necessary or right to approve for the government to borrow money, that, that one is administrative thing with the government. 
So Ibom Petro will not jump out to say, oh, House of Assembly, you are wrong. Government, you are. But as long as that loan is targeted at the development of this state, there's nothing wrong in taking loans, but it has to go for the development of this state, except that money is diverted for something else. That is when Ibom Petro will react. Yeah. So, <laughs> so in the peace, that's why we are appealing to the youth now. Because those are the only people politicians have used over the years. They will use you during elections. After, they will make you PA to PA. They, start, they will start giving you hands out, hand out. Is that what you want to depend on? Why would you go and die? Why would you go and kill? Why would you go and maim only to become a PA to PA? Or continue to wait for handouts from politicians? There's a trend that is going on that I condemn totally. They call it empowerment. Why would you call our people out and carry media to focus, then you hand over 500,000 to somebody? You say you are empowering the person. Why must you do it publicly? We have self-pride. You are ruining their self-esteem and pride. And that's what the youth should look at. The person is not doing you any favor. If he goes on to publish, that he gave you 200,000, I gave you 100,000. And by the way, why would you buy a Jeep for a jobless person? There are other ways of empowering people. And you don't have to do it in being your presence. You can, if you love somebody, you want to help the person. You call the person, either you go to the person's house and empower, empower the person. That is your private decision. But your primary re, uh, this thing, job as a legislator, I will start from there is to go and make laws for good governance. That's what we need from you. So the youth must now try to look at it. A person that comes to give you 1,500,000 in public space, and the press will carry it, and it's documented. One day, your child may pick that document eh, and feel ashamed that his father had relied on handouts. So that is something you should all reject. You have no job doing to sustain that. The person gives you a car, and he knows that you, don't, you cannot maintain this car. But he gives it to you for his self-pride, eh? for him to get your vote. And you collect the car, you want to fuel, you go back to the person. You want to fix the car, you go back to the person. What he has done to you is not empowerment, it's enslavement. That's why I said, youth, better late than never. It's time for you to rise up to know that you can also become governor. Don't mortgage your future to anybody. One of the banes of this estate is lack of development in our rural areas. So if somebody comes and says, oh, I want to focus on development of the rural areas, you have my support. Because I believe that if our rural areas is developed, that will change the migration pattern. We will see a change. Instead of rural uh, urban migration, we start seeing urban rural migration. And with that, with that way, things will change. This state, in the, give it 10 years or two, 10 years, if we start that, in 10 years' time, things will change in this state. And I, if I'm still alive, I will continue to support and Ibom Petro will continue to support any government that is focused, that is ready to uh, do some work for the state, for the people of Akwa Ibom State. We will always support such government. We are not an anti-government group, but we do have teeth to bite when necessary. Two votes of thanks wrapped up the hour-long event. Secretary General of Ibom Patriot, Right Honorable Barrister Usenabon Apabio, presented that of the organization, while former chairman of Nigeria Union of Journalists, Akwaibum State, Comrade Joe Effion of the Sun newspaper, did that of the journalists. Ibom Petroit, service to our people. Uh, with the greatest respect to the Chancellor, gentlemen of the press, I want to thank um, the um, Chancellor for hosting all of us here. And I want to thank um, all of the patriots who have found time to come. 
And I also want to thank uh, the gentlemen of the press. But most importantly, I want to give glory to God Amen. for making this uh, a very successful one. Thank you, and God bless all of Amen. us. My colleagues, let me thank God. First of all, we have a day like this uh, that we have seen Ibn Petros again, and Ibn Petros are with us. I believe that next time we are going to go to the press center as usual so that they can speak to a, a larger crowd. I, I thank you for this opportunity to listen to you and to let us know your thoughts about the election that is coming. So I thank you for this opportunity and I believe that uh, the peace that we are praying for, we, we sustain it and the development that we always go for in our private states with peace will have it even much better than what we have. Thank you very much. Thank you. Also present were some senior citizens and stalwarts of Ibom Patriot, including former Commissioner Minister of Health, Dr. Okun Emma, former Commissioner Minister of Environment, Right Honorable Barrister Ekong Samson, PhD, former Chairman of Old Itu Local Government and later of Ibion Ibom Local Government, Obong Marcos Okuku, former Permanent Secretary, Barrister Mrs. Mary Ewa, and a power Michael Bush, who packaged and coordinated the proceedings. It is believed that Ibn Patriot's timely intervention shall go a long way in re-engineering the mindset of our Kwaibom people. It is the only way to go if the state must achieve its much-envisaged future. This is Godwin James for Bush House, Nigeria. <laughs>